Today we're talking about a new player in the world of online knowledge, Grokopedia. Imagine the encyclopedia you use right now, you know the one run by volunteers. What if someone built a version of it powered by AI? That's the idea behind Grokopedia. In this video, we'll break down what it is, how it works, or at least what we know so far, why it matters, and what risks you should keep in mind. So let's get started. First up, what exactly is Grokopedia? Grokopedia is an online encyclopedia launched on 27th October 2025 by the AI company XAI, which is run by Elon Musk. The name Grokopedia draws on the world Grok, which means to understand deeply, and Musk chatbot, also called Grok. Musk has been vocal about his belief that Wikipedia has ideological bias. He's called it woke in some posts, and he says Grokopedia will be an improved, more objective alternative. At launch, Grokopedia claimed about 885,000 entries, a fraction of nearly 7 million articles that English Wikipedia has. So in simple terms, think encyclopedia plus AI plus big ambition to become a major reference source. Let's talk about how Grokopedia is different from a traditional encyclopedia model. With Wikipedia, it's built by a global community of volunteer editors who write and edit articles. Anyone can, in most cases, contribute to it. With Grokopedia, content is generated by AI, the Grok language model, and then fact-checked by the same model or by the company's processes. Users cannot directly edit the articles in the same way that they can with Wikipedia. There are also some key differences. Number one, speed and scale. An AI engine can produce many articles quickly. Number two, editorial mode. Instead of a community editing, it's a company plus model driven process. Number three, source material. Many Grokpedia articles appear to be derived from or adapted from Wikipedia content without attribution in some cases. Number four, governance and transparency. With Wikipedia, you have edit history, talk pages, transparency, and things like that. With Grokopedia, it's less clear yet how full editorial oversight works. For example, on a site or elsewhere, you'll see disclaimers that the content was fact-checked by Grok, but the specifics of the process are still not clear. So yes, it looks familiar in layout and encyclopedia mode, but the engine behind it is different, and that matters a lot. Now, why should we all care about Grokopedia, and why does this matter? Well, encyclopedias are foundational. They shape what people believe, what students use, what professionals reference in their work. If the model of how knowledge is produced is changing, that's a big implication for everybody. And as AI systems become more embedded in research, learning, business, and more, having AI-generated reference material means questions of accuracy, bias, and reliability become very critical. And one of Musk's motivation is that Wikipedia, in his view, has a political or ideological slant. By launching Grokopedia, he's inserting a new voice into the knowledge ecosystem. However, that raises questions about whose details get included, who's not included, and how is truth defined. For sure, AI can generate content faster, but you also open up risk of errors, hallucinations, and key information being omitted. For users who rely on encyclopedias, like students, professionals, and regular people, you need to be more vigilant. So if you're someone who uses reference material for work, study, or research, or you're someone that likes understanding new technology and trends, keeping an eye on Grokopedia and its development is worthwhile and important. All right, why don't we try out this new Grokopedia? We're going to ask a couple of questions and let's see what it produced, what the interaction looks like, what the interface feels like. So let's start off with the basic question. Who is LeBron James? Now, this is interesting. When I enter, it gives me a bunch of random things. So this is cool. Let's just click on the first one, which is who is LeBron James? All right. Okay. So it opens up a article looking layout for us. And you can see you have the ability to go through a bunch of things on the side. Um, it gives a quick analysis of LeBron James, who he is youth and okay a bunch of information about him so it kind of looks like wikipedia but obviously it's in a different format 
but you can't really tell the difference between Wikipedia and Grokopedia because the majority of the changes are on the back end as we covered earlier on in the video. But you know, it's not too bad. Uh, let's try something else. I feel like it gives a lot of information on LeBron James. Probably I could do a PhD on it. It also has reference materials at the bottom, which is good to see because you can see what Grokopedia is using. Let's try asking it something more historical and let's see what it comes up with. Maybe something that was very controversial that we all probably been through was the 2020 pandemic. But let's see what Grokopedia produces. Okay. On the get-go, I do not like the search feature of Grokopedia. It kind of feels buggy. It doesn't really give me what I'm looking for. Um, and like, as you can see, I just typed in who made the COVID virus and I have a bunch of random suggestions which don't really align with what I was looking for. But I see COVID-19 at the bottom, so let's click on that. Okay, so there's a bunch of information on here so if you're doing some research yes this could be really helpful for you because you have a good idea of everything related to the topic you're looking for and you know we see the virology and origins we also have clinker features diagnosis and prevention measures and everything like that we also have some controversies and debates now this is the part where elon musk said that grokopedia is different and i want to know how is it different so yeah it does I guess it's trying to be non-biased. It does talk about the lab leak hypotheses and everything related to that. Um, but I'm still having a hard time understanding how this is different from Wikipedia. Maybe I missed something that you guys are catching. So let me know in the comments how you have been finding Wikipedia different from Grokopedia. One cool thing about Grokopedia is that let's say there's a specific part in there that you don't really understand. You can select that part, ask Grok specific questions about it. So let's highlight this part where people are using alternative treatments to you know, combat COVID-19. So I'm gonna highlight this. I'm gonna ask Grok, why was this controversial? It opens up the question in Grok and Grok is now currently analyzing the controversy and giving me an answer. So let's see what it comes up with. So it is taking some time to think. So I'm not sure why it's taking this long. Obviously, it looks like it's going through a bunch of sources, but let's see what the end result is. Okay, so it is uh, giving me some detailed analysis of why that thing was controversial. So obviously, like if you're using Grokopedia for research purposes or you're a student writing a paper, and if you're ever confused about a specific thing, you can get some clarity on it and Grok will give you a detailed answer to it. So I think this is a really good tool for when it comes to research. All right, let's look at both sides of Grokopedia because like most things must build, it's a mix of good ideas and big questions. The good, first is innovative. Using AI to write and update articles could keep information fresh and cover topics humans haven't touched yet. Second, it is fast. AI can scale up thousands of pages in a day, and that's a major leap in knowledge creation compared to what we have been using currently. And third, it does shake up the status quo. Even if you love Wikipedia, having competition might push everyone to improve. You might have faster upgrades, better tech, fewer biases. Now the bad, the biggest concern is accuracy. AI can still make confident mistakes and without human editors, it's harder to catch them. Then there's bias. Grokopedia claims to be neutral, but it's built around Musk's vision of truth, which could tilt things in its own way. And finally, transparency. Wikipedia shows who edits what. Grokopedia doesn't, at least at the moment. We don't really know how each article is written or verified. So yeah. It is a bold experiment, but it also reminds us that information is only as trustworthy as the system behind it, and it's good to see that AI is making some moves in there. Personally, I think Grokopedia is a glimpse into the future, where AI doesn't just summarize information, it actually helps create it. But that means we'll have to be more thoughtful about what we read, trust, and share. For now, it's an interesting experiment, worth exploring, but not something I rely on blindly. If it keeps evolving responsibly, it could become something big. If not, it'll just remind us why human oversight still matters. Anyway, that's my take, but I'd love to hear yours. Do you see Grokopedia as the next evolution of Wikipedia or just another tech stunt? Drop your thoughts down below. I read every comment. 
And if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next deep dive. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.